Hi, I just got back from my 49th cruise. It was on the Celebrity Beyond. The Beyond is one of the newest ships in Celebrity's Edge class. I was very excited to try it out because I've been on many Celebrity cruises, but never on the Edge class. And I discovered something that I want to share with all of my viewers, especially those over 70, because I've detected a trend among the cruise lines, which is very important for us to be aware of. I'm Sandy from Sandy Over 70. Welcome to my channel. I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. And also, please excuse my voice. After I got back from the cruise, I developed a cold and I'm just now getting over it. My recent video on my three favorite cruise lines included Celebrity, and I actually listed it as my favorite cruise line, but I'm sorry to say that is probably not true anymore. And I'll tell you why as we go along. This video will contain my impressions of the ship, both pro and con. Later on, I'll be making additional videos on specific areas of the beyond, such as dining and entertainment. At the end, I'll tell you about a trend that I noticed after traveling on this cruise that pertains to the three major cruise lines that I generally travel on. That is Princess, Celebrity, and Royal Caribbean. And it applies directly to our age group. We were booked in Aqua Class, which I have never done before. So that's another thing I was looking forward to. The Aqua Class cabins are exactly like any veranda cabin, but it entitles you to eat in their restaurant blue, which has supposedly clean dining menus. And also it entitles you to use their thermal suite in the spa. I'm going to start with the things I really liked about the Beyond in no particular order. And first of all, it was a new ship. It's sparkling. It's clean. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has art everywhere. There isn't a wall that doesn't have some kind of piece of art, some photograph. Every elevator has a huge piece of photographic art in it. And most of all, the thing I loved was the statues, the sculptures that were all over the ship. And they were in gold. So rich, so beautiful looking. I've really never seen anything quite like this before. So many ships today have constant announcements over the PA, enough to drive you crazy. They announce every game that they're going to play. They just talk constantly throughout the day. This ship had no announcements except for the captain's daily update. Oh, it was wonderful. It was peaceful. I really loved that about the Beyond. There were very few children on this cruise. This cruise line does not cater to children. Yes, they have a program for children. And obviously, the children were in this program because I didn't see them during the day. I could say I probably f saw a handful of children throughout the cruise. And if you prefer an adult type of cruise, then you would enjoy this one. We saw a number of scooters and wheelchairs, and so I know that it is accessible to those of you with mobility issues. There was also a wheelchair elevator in the back of the ship, which I had never noticed on other ships. So I think that this allowed people in scooters and wheelchairs to move about the ship without having to go into the passenger elevators, which is a good thing for everyone. The elevator banks were designed so well, better than any other ship that I recall. There were only two elevator banks. 
Each elevator bank had eight large elevators and they were secluded from the cabin so the noise from the elevators was not evident in the hallways where the cabins were giving those people near the elevators quiet. I can honestly say we never had to wait very long for elevators, never. And they were never really packed except on embarkation and debarkation. They also did something unique with their lighting. The entire elevator would light up either red or green around the edges and the top. I mean, you couldn't miss it. So if you wanted an elevator to go up, you looked for one that lit up green. And if you wanted to go down, you looked for an elevator that lit up red. It was so easy then to just walk over to the elevator you needed. I really liked that. Captain Kate McHugh was the captain of this ship, and I was so happy because she worked three months on and three months off. I wasn't sure until right up until the time we left if we would be getting her. And why is this important? I am such a big fan of Captain Kate. Back in 2015, I was on the summit and the captain came onto the PA during our safety drill and said, Hi, I'm Captain Kate McHugh, but you can call me Captain Kate. As soon as I find my purse, I'll get the keys and get this ship rolling. I thought that was terrific. And Captain Kate was all over the ship. She was very visible. And I found out that she is the first American woman to captain a mega ship. She is quite the celebrity because she is on all the social media sites and has millions of fans. So when I found out she was our captain, I was delighted. One of the things that I noticed differently is that every evening as we came out of the theater, all of the top officers were lined up in a row just outside the theater so that they were visible. She is visible everywhere. And she also made sure that her top officers were visible as well. I'll do an entire video on Captain Kate because I really enjoy her. Another thing I noticed was at the customer service area. Usually there's a long desk, but they had it broken up into three smaller desks with two people at each one and just a computer there. I actually never saw any kind of long line, which is unusual for customer service. And I walked by it many times. I think the most I ever saw were two or three people in line and they got taken care of relatively quickly. I ate breakfast and lunch in the Ocean Cafe, which is their buffet, every single day. And I have to say, the food was delicious. I have no complaints about anything I ate there. I looked forward to it. Also, I was very impressed. When you walk in, there is a bank of faucets, soap, and sinks for hand washing, and I am very adamant about hand washing on a ship, so I really appreciated that. Also in the buffet, usually the coffee station, the beverage station, is very crowded with people bumping into each other trying to get to the glasses, the spigots, but they designed it differently on this ship. Instead of like a half a circle, they made the beverage station long and narrow. And there were two of them, one on each side of the buffet. And because of that, there was never any crowding. Now, you might have to walk to one end to get your coffee cup and the other end to get your coffee. But that kept the station completely open and free from crowds. I really liked that. The thing I loved the very best about the Beyond was the main theater. The stage was a semicircle. There was seating on all three sides in the round. And the background was lit with a million dollar lighting system, an LED lighting system that they were able to project anything and everything on those screens. So there was no need for any sets. Now, I have never seen this on other ships, except on the Holland America Conningsdam. 
but I know that they are putting this kind of background lighting on all of the newest ships and it makes a world of difference. I can't tell you how exciting it makes these shows. The production shows were out of this world. Probably the best ever. The talent of the production team, the dancers, singers was top level. And then combined with this background scenery, you just couldn't beat it. I loved every minute. There were three main production shows. In addition to that, there was a second production team, which I had also never seen before, and they were just as good. They did a bistro style of entertainment, kind of a speakeasy. Their thing was a speakeasy, and they did it in two of the other venues. Wonderful. Wonderful costuming. I can't rave enough. They also had wonderful guest entertainers, top of the line, except for one, and I'll mention him in the cons. If you're someone who likes the silent discos, you're in luck on the beyond, because they had three silent discos. I've never seen three. Usually there's one. It was quite popular among the younger people, I will say. Now for the cons were the things that I really didn't care for. This was an 11-day cruise, and unfortunately, our very first stop in the Cayman Islands was canceled due to high waves, and the big ship couldn't get into the port that they were assigned to. So this meant that we had almost six sea days on this trip, which I thought was too much I think maybe if the ship had been less crowded, it wouldn't have felt so bad, but this ship was crowded. And that was one of my main dislikes. It was constantly busy. You couldn't walk anywhere without mobs of people. And you didn't notice the crowds on reflection, which is the ship we took last year in the solstice class. But this ship was crowded. In fact, we couldn't find a seat in the buffet for breakfast or lunch. Almost never. It was hot. And I would circle and circle. Everyone was so frustrated. I finally found a little table for two, actually three tables for two, behind a, a fenced-in area where they dumped the garbage. And you couldn't see it from the aisle. And once I found that, I always went there and it was always empty because obviously people couldn't see it. And so that's where we sat. But I was very unhappy with the crowds. In the evening, the, when we got out of the theater, massive crowds. Everything was crowded. And that was a really big dissatisfier for me. I like ships that are busy, but I think this was too much. This ship is smaller than the Royal Caribbean Oasis class ships, and yet it felt bigger. I think on Oasis, there are neighborhoods that break up the length of the ship, but here it was one straight line from front to back, and it was a lot of walking, so be aware. In fact, I ended up with a blister on my heel because unfortunately I wore a pair of flats that weren't quite broken in. So be sure to take shoes for the evening that are very comfortable. Everyone is required to have the app on their phone in order to check in actually. And that was fine. It was an app that had a lot of components to it, but I found it a little cumbersome to use. Fortunately, they always put a paper copy of the next day's activities on the bed at night. It would be loaded with so-called activities. In fact, at the top of the page, it would often say 50 or 60 activities today. But guess what? I would say seven-eighths of those activities were product solicitation. That is, they were selling something from one of the stores. It was a giveaway from one of the stores, or it was 
a promotion of something in the spa. I really don't think they had all that many activities. The activities they did have were pool activities, games at the pool, um, and a few games inside. There were no enrichment lectures that I remember. Of course, Celebrity is not known for enrichment lectures, so you can't blame them for that. If you want that, you go on Cunard. But it was rather disappointing to see all those activities listed, and then I had to weed through them to find anything that might be an actual activity. Last year on the reflection, they had two professional dance instructors teach dance lessons quite a few times, and we were looking forward to that but that did not appear on the program whatsoever, except for once or twice they were doing a dance lesson up at the pool. I was not about to go up to the pool in the scorching heat <laughs> to try and do a dance lesson, and who knows what kind of dance it was anyway. I mentioned in the things that I liked that the production shows and the entertainers were first class. However, on the first night, they had a comedian that was the worst comedian I have ever heard on a ship. I am sorry to say he was terrible. He wasn't getting any laughs. And if I hadn't been in the middle of a very long row, I think we might have left we were traveling with another couple, and all four of us agreed that that was bad, and we were hoping that that wasn't a shadowing of what was to come for entertainment. Fortunately, it wasn't. The theater was another problem area. There was never enough seating. People were standing in the back. I don't really understand how they can put 3,200 people on a ship and not provide enough seating for the two shows. For the first production show, the theater was filled when we arrived, and we luckily found probably the last two seats, but our two friends had to stand, and they couldn't stand in the back for that whole show, so they left. The next production show, the same thing happened, and we left, and we came back for the second show, which was also crowded, but we were able to get some seats in the front of the theater. And that's exactly what we found, that if we walked in all the way to the front first two rows on the right-hand side, we could get seats. I guess a lot of people don't want to sit in the front, but we didn't care. We just wanted to sit. So for all of the shows, that's exactly what we did. We didn't fool around trying to find seats in the middle section. We just went all the way down to the front and sat in the second row on the right. Now, granted, most of the entertainment was facing the middle portion and we were getting the side, but at least we could see. And it enabled me to get great video. My final and biggest disappointment was the dancing. The main grand plaza had a place for live entertainment, and there was live entertainment every evening with a band and a singer interspersed with a DJ. The dance floor was tiny. The bar was gigantic. Well, of course, that's where the money is made. Every night, the dance floor was empty, for the most part. Why? Because they did not play any music that you could actually dance to. There were people sitting all around. This is a huge grand plaza. People sitting everywhere, at the bar, at tables, wanting to dance but listening to music that was not danceable. Occasionally, they would play something that we could do a little fast dance to or slow dance to. All four of us are ballroom dancers, and we were hoping for occasionally a piece of danceable music. Never once. We did make do, and we danced as best we could to music. We danced a lot. But it wasn't to really good music. Now, there were a lot of ballroom dancers. 
on this ship and they were wanting to dance and they were very frustrated. And the one couple that we talked to, she went up and talked to the DJ and literally begged him, asked him to play particular songs so that we could dance. And he said he wasn't allowed to, he had to stick to the playlist he was given. I find this appalling. I can't even begin to tell you how disappointing this was because we go on ships to dance, 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 and we were not really able to do that as we wanted to. Again, we danced a lot. We danced every night somehow, some way. We danced slow dances and we danced some swing dances, but we made do. There was also a disco called The Club. And after midnight, they would play music for the younger set, I will say. And during the day, they used it for games. One night at midnight, my husband and I went in there, and they were playing some modern tune. We decided to try and dance to it, which we did. I think we did a hustle to it. There was no one in there. And we just had a good time. We did a hustle, and then we did a swing. And then we sat down because the music became very, very modern to the, for the younger set, and we just couldn't even adapt to that. So we sat down. After a while, I heard a voice from the corner up in the ceiling. It's a two-story venue. And the voice said, would you like me to play some ballroom music? I was shocked. It was the DJ. And I went, he said, this is modern music. And I went, <laughs> said, what would you like me to play? And I was speechless. And he said, how about a rumba? I went, yes. <laughs> Fast or slow, he asked. Slow, I said. And so he played a rumba for just us. <laughs> and we did it all alone in the disco. After that, some other people arrived took a look at what was happening with the really contemporary music and left. It was so sad because they could have easily, in that room with the huge dance floor, taken one hour a day and played ballroom music so older people or anyone who likes to do ballroom dancing could have gone in there and danced and been very happy on this cruise, but they didn't do that. And that leads me to the trend that I want to tell you about. The interesting thing on the Beyond was, although they are obviously trying to get younger people onto the ship, the majority of passengers were in their 70s at least, maybe beyond. Yes, there were some younger people, and we saw them at the silent disco. Here's another thing. I've been to silent discos, and they have three channels that you can listen to. You put on headphones, and you dance to what you hear. So everybody's doing different dances and singing out loud to different songs. So I went up to the desk to get my headphones, and I said, I want the channel with 50s music. And he said, well, there's three channels. You can pick what you want. So I put the headphones on, and there was no 50s channel. There was 60s, 70s music, there was contemporary music, and there was Latin music. It wasn't really the music I was looking for. And we tried dancing a little bit. Then we took off the headphones and I watched and almost everyone on the dance floor had the green channel, which was the 60s and 70s music. And they were all younger than us. And there was a goodly number of them, maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 people who came out for the silent disco. And they did that three times for that group of people. But the older people did not participate because they weren't playing our music. Very interesting. It became obvious to me very soon that the edge class of ships were catering to a younger demographic. They are trying to attract not families on celebrity because they've never 
gone after that demographic, but they are trying to attract a younger generation, a generation who doesn't have any interest in ballroom dancing or many of the activities that our generation enjoys. The activities are all around the pool and they always got a good crowd because there were younger people on the ship. It was packed around the pool, no two ways about it. People were taking up every seat and there were people participating in the pool activities. But for those of us our age, many of us really can't take that heat. The heat was intense. We were in the Southern Caribbean. We were actually in South America for a day in Cartagena and the heat was oppressive. So I know myself, I didn't want to be sitting out on those deck chairs. And if I sat anywhere, it was in the solarium where there's air conditioning. So that was another thing I noticed. The activities weren't geared to our age group. I've traveled on the Princess Cruise Line quite a few times and I almost booked a cruise on their newest class of ships, which is just being released now. It's the Sun Princess, a completely new design. They have the Star Princess coming out next year and it looked really exciting. But I didn't do it because I had a feeling that it was geared to a younger clientele. And now, having sailed on the beyond, I believe that Princess is doing the same thing. They are taking away the things that the over 70 crowd enjoyed and replacing them with other activities and things. The other cruise line, Royal Caribbean, that I almost booked was their newest class of ships. The Icon just came out and it is the largest ship in the world. And I was excited I was going to book it. And I studied the reviews and I looked at the floor plans and I realized that even though Royal Caribbean has always catered to all generations, to families, this one was beyond anything they had done in the past. They had an entire section of the ship designed for young children. I was actually considering booking their suite because it was so cute and it wasn't all that expensive. It was like a two-room suite. But Fortunately, I caught myself in time because the area right below these suites that it looked down on was an entire playground area for young children. <laughs> this ship is going to be loaded with children and it's going to be noisy because not only is it this playground area, but they have all the things for younger people, the waves to surf and the wall climbing, all that stuff. So here's another example of the newest class of ship on Royal Caribbean catering to a younger clientele. So when I said I saw a trend, this is what it is. Celebrity, Royal Caribbean, and Princess have all released new classes of ships, and they are all geared to families and to younger people. I will not be booking on any of these new classes of ships. I will be staying with the older classes of ships, or maybe, actually, and this is hard for me to say, I may start cruising on smaller ships. I have always loved the big ships. I loved all the activity and the choices. But at my age now, I am considering maybe trying one of the smaller ships like Oceana, Viking, something like that. It remains to be seen. I have booked a small ship cruise for May, and it is on American Cruise Line. It's, I believe, 180 passengers. I had tried their small independence with 90 passengers. I did not like it at all. It was way too small. 
I did not care for the entertainment at all. I thought the ship was old looking. But this is a new small ship. And actually, I wouldn't have booked on American Cruise Line at all if American Queen Voyages hadn't gone out of business. And those of you who follow me will know that I predicted that in my video called What's Going On with American Queen Voyages. Unfortunately, my prediction came true. And I did love their cruise ships. I did love their company, but they're not available anymore. So I have to relook at American Cruise Line because that's all there is if I want to take uh, river cruises in the United States. I know everyone is not going to agree with me and my opinions, but that is fine. They're my opinions, and I would love to hear your opinions in the comments. Please feel free to do that. I thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.